realities exist. And, you know, I'm not saying I advocate for one thing or another. What I'm saying is I advocate for conversation. I advocate for having public health officials have a dialogue because I think what's interesting is that we sort of treat other people as if they can't handle the truth. And I think when we do that, we do this as humans as we, and that's so codependent of us, is that we like, I don't wanna tell you the whole truth because I don't think you have the tools to manage it. And in doing that, we don't empower the person to be a grown up. We don't empower them to adult. And we also start to resent them because we're not telling them the truth. And we do this relationally all the time. And that's where, one, we get to hold on to the resentment and that holds on to hierarchy in the relationships. I now have more power than you because I'm, you know, I'm protecting you from this truth. And that, as a, in terms of families and human systems, we tend to dance around truths and not bring them forward when really that saying, the truth sets you free, it couldn't be more true in relationships. You know, we often think like, if I say this thing, it might break the relationship. It, if it does, then the relationship couldn't hold all of you and, and it couldn't hold the actual truth. And when you actually bring something forward that can fracture a relationship, it also invites it to deepen. And I think that is one of the most important aspects of relationship is like, if we're hiding what's real, what we really feel, we are being manipulative and we're part of it too, you know? And, you know, and I think it's interesting because when you talk about relationship, um, you know, I, I tend to automatically think of, you know, romantic relationships, right. but yeah. we're talking about relationships in, in this sense. We're talking about relationships with our broader community, relationships with our feelings, relationships with our thoughts and right. actions and behaviors. Um, I, I, I'd just be remiss if I didn't ask you, what, what is the role of love, you know, in general, when it comes to fostering those types of uh, relationships? Well, you know, someone asked me the other day, how would I define love? And I That's hadn't my been asked question that. for you. Yeah. Well, I hadn't been asked <laughs> that in so long. And so um, I appreciate you asking it is I would define love as freedom. That love is freedom. Love ultimately is freedom to be ourselves, but we often are so terrified of, of someone being free to be themselves because we don't allow ourselves to be ourselves. And, and so when someone sort of models that sort of space of just telling the truth and expressing themselves, that can often terrify us because we haven't seen relationships modeled that way. And so we're sort of like pioneers. Relationships, you know, as you well know, the models of relationship we inherited were not based ultimately on love. You know, when you look at the marriage historian, Stephanie Kuhn, she talks about how love was ultimate, marriage was ultimately to get more in-laws historically, you know? And, and, you know, not everyone wants more in-laws depending on your experience, right? And so I think when we start to see that we are building relationships in a way that has never been modeled for us, I think that shows us the sort of immense uh, responsibility, but also possibility. Because, you know, there's a book by Eli Finkel called The All or Nothing Marriage. And he's, uh, he worked, I know he's from Northwestern, I believe. And he talks about how that, that marriages of today are better than they've ever been. There's just fewer of them. Mm. And I think that's really true. Like my experience of people is they crave this understanding, they crave this possibility and yeah. they're willing to do it. And I don't think we've ever been in a better time than now to know all of that, you know, to have the skills. Weird, because I was looking at hashtags on Instagram the other day, and I think love is like one of the most uh, frequently used, like two billion people follow. It's like people really crave this idea of love, yeah. I think, and, you know, with regards to every single facet of their human experience. So um, my last question for you, Mark, I mean, what's, where, where are you going with all of this? I mean, what is your, what is your intention behind your work? Oh man, you know, the name Create the Love really came from this idea of like great relationships don't just happen. Like we create them, it's a skill set, and everyone can learn how to do it. We are not uh, in a lifetime sentence based on what's occurred in our lives. And I, to me, that was just so freeing when I realized it, when I'm like, wait, if I take responsibility for how I communicate, how I show up, how I define myself, then I'm free. And uh, I just co-founded an app called Mind, which is M-I-N-E apostrophe D. And 
It is, it, the idea of it was to create like basically the world's first emotional network. That it'd be about like, you know, the data on things like Instagram and, and Facebook, like when you go to use them, you often leave not feeling better about yourself, right. often worse. <laughs> So I was like, what would it be like for people to be able to go on this space and learn about relationship to money, relationship to uh, other people, uh, their family of origin? I mean, we've got incredible teachers on there. And it was just like, as I just sort of, you know, I think about what the future is of, of my work. It's sort of, you know, I don't know what it's going to look like yet. Yeah. But, but mind has really been a really beautiful um, way to sort of contribute and it's it's free right now so anyone can use it and it's on uh, iPhone and Android and you know it's I really think that you know we're gonna we're gonna need to be together to get through all of these things and no, never more than ever have I ever felt the need for community and conversations like the ones we're having so thank you so much I, I feel so honored to be I can't believe it's sort of like I got to pinch myself that I'm talking <laughs> on men's health, um, especially when I think of like the bartender, uh, you know, uh, advice column that they have in there, Jimmy the bartender. Um, so I sort of, you know, think now there's like this chat that's going on on the live. It's just so powerful. It's so important that we recognize that all of us are struggling that, you know, one of my greatest experiences in doing the work I've been doing is just this witnessing of each other of like, perfection is bullshit and perfection yeah. is not even real. It's just, it's just hustling for worth. And imperfection is really what binds all of us. It's what, you know, when someone shares something they're struggling with, everyone goes, yeah, me too. Amazing. Right. Yes. Not just me. And so I, I don't know, maybe the future is just to continue to cultivate community and, and just to keep having these conversations. And I hope this is a way to model future conversations. You know, a lot of people are going to watch this and, you know, I hope they share it and I hope they start to have conversations like th these with their family and with, you know, their friends and reaching out to other guys um, as well, because I think we need more of that. Um, thanks so much, Mark. This has been great. I really right. Thank you so and much. Hope we can stay connected and stay in touch. Oh my gosh, absolutely. I'm so, honestly, I'm so grateful and so elated. You've made my Friday. Uh, so thank you so much for inviting me and, and for uh, offering me the time and this, and this opportunity to share. Have a great weekend. Stay well. You too.